Hi folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Um, I've decided to uh, give you a complete overview of my boondocking system that I use in the RV for dry camping. Uh, over the course of the last year and a half I've built it slowly. I couldn't afford to get it all at once so um, I've kind of posted videos and blog posts describing all the different components I've, I've installed over that time so it's kind of a mishmash if someone's following along so I've decided now that I'm fairly happy with the complete system as it is I've decided to do kind of an overview of the whole the whole system so I've made up this kind of uh, diagram schematic very you know simple schematic diagram of the whole thing so I'll go through it quickly here then we'll go out and see the actual components hooked up in the RV so to start um, we'll go with the the solar energy you can see up here I have four panels 100 watt panels they're located up on the roof um, they're wired in parallel along with my latest 100 watt panel which is a remote kind of ground panel that I can move around on the ground and it sits on my truck so they're all wired in parallel into the charge controller um, for protection I've I'm going to inst I don't haven't done it yet but I'm going to install in the next few days a 10 amp fuse in line with each of those panels positive line um, why I want to do that is now that I have five panels it could be possible for one of those panels say this one up here developed a, sh a slight short circuit or something the other four panels could gang up and start sending current to that panel possibly overheating the wire or melting causing damage and in an unlikely event maybe even cause a fire so I'm just gonna as a safe safety precaution put 10 amp fuses in each of those line so all that power comes down and it's joined in into a breaker here it's a 40 amp switchable breaker um, so I can quickly switch off that whole array if I like just by pushing a button on that breaker and it also is 40 amps so it kind of protects my charge controller um, for my charge controller I have the Bogart P PWM charge controller um, it's not an MPPT um, if you wanted more information on that go look at the blog post as to why I chose that instead I have links to much more information but it's a good little 30 amp charge controller and the cool thing about it is it meets with my battery monitor down here and my battery monitor is a trimetric monitor made by the same company Bogart Engineering so they they work through this data cable and with the battery monitor I can go in and set all kinds of settings for my charge controller it's really advanced I can go and set up charging profiles how I want things to charge in absorption mode or final mode really cool and it also gives me lots of information from that controller I can get um, uh, temperature of my batteries that's one thing I don't have on this diagram but this controller has a little sensor over on my batteries and I can check the check the the temperature of my batteries and it also reads that temperature and can adjust itself on the fly for better charge when it's charging the batteries uh, next on the other side of that charge controller I have another 40 amp breaker so I'm able to turn that circuit off as well and that's between the charge controller down to my battery bank so my battery bank consists of four golf cart batteries they're interstate batteries uh, lead acid type wet cell not AGM or lithium um, I kind of built this system as cheap as I could but still kind of maintain quality components kind of a trying to find a fine line between the two um, I can really get away with lead acid because the front compartment of my fifth wheel has all kinds of uh, airflow through it so gassing of the batteries is not a huge concern for me also I don't mind going in and maintaining it and, and checking the water levels and stuff like that so so I found it the best bang for the buck for me um, you can see also here there's a 200, 200 amp fuse um, that's just in case anything in the whole system goes wrong to a point that things are gonna you know with batteries they can put a lot of current and quickly overheat wires to the point of causing a fire so that's kind of they call it a catastrophic fuse and that's kind of a final fail-safe fuse on that so yeah next we got uh, we can charge my batteries with the solar system 
but you know it's it's not always uh it's sunny out sometimes you can get a little bunch of cloudy days in a row or say we start running our tv all day or something and we wear our batteries down to the point the solar can't recharge them um, i could plug in my generator to the rigs power cord but i found that the the oem converter in the rig does a very poor job of charging my batteries and it, it takes on all, all day to, to try to get a good charge and it never really accomplishes it so I bought an IntelliPower 60 amp converter and I've mounted it just about a foot away from my batteries with heavy heavy cables and I can put up to 60 amps of, of charge into my batteries and uh, quite quickly charge my batteries up I find it's two to three times faster than the OEM charge converter uh, so now that I've got my batteries charged up um, that supplies all the 12 volt loads to my RV so the power comes out goes through this I put in this switch here so that I have the ability to turn off those RV circuits if I want as far as fusing I'm just using what the RV had they have a couple uh, inline fusible breakers in there so I just left that alone it can it was it was set by the factory to whatever the the needs be I think they're 30 amp but I like having that to be able to turn it off if I'm going to work on a circuit or put the rig in storage or something like that um, so that supplies my 12 volt now when we're boondocking we have some stuff we want that requires AC power like your your house outlets and uh, we wanted to run that most of our, our our things we want to run are like computers and laptops and little chargers and camera batteries and so we didn't really need a huge inverter so I decided to go with a 1000 watt inverter um, the 1000 watt inverter it would it would struggle to run our microwave or, or, or things like that you really need a 2000 watt inverter if you want to start running coffee makers anything with a with a heating element like a toaster or stuff like that um, I didn't desire that we can get by if I want to if I want to run stuff like that briefly I can always fire up my generator to do, do, do that so I went with a 100 watt inverter to save money and on the output of it it's actually all it goes to is two plugs in our RV there's a plug in the living room near the TV and the entertainment center and I have another dedicated plug in the bathroom area so I can run my shaver or my, I, I like to use a water pick on my teeth, stuff like that. So we only need two outlets when we boondock. Some people may want to, you know, set up their whole rigs outlets. And if you go to my inverter video, I explain why I didn't do that and what you can do to do that. And in line with that 1,000 watt inverter is an 80 amp breaker, just in case something goes wrong there. Um, let's go down here. We've got, if we go down the ground area, we're grounded to the chassis of the rig and also we go through this shunt so all the negative loads of the battery are wired on one side of this shunt is all the negative loads and the batteries on the other side so all the current used used by the batteries goes through this shunt and you can see there's a couple current sense wires that are attached to that and then they report back to the monitor so the trimetric monitor knows all the current going in and out of the batteries and can calculate how how full the batteries are in percentage and also report the voltage and things like that um, it also needed a wire attached to the positive side to run it and there's a little 2 amp fuse in there so I hope you're still with me on that uh, maybe now we'll go out and I'll show you it in uh, real life um, if you want to get this uh, this uh, diagram it's going to be posted I'm doing a complete blog post on this whole thing with where the video will be embedded and also photos and descriptions and links to all of my articles. Um, also in the, the video description, I'll post a link back to every video I've done on all the different components that I installed. Okay, let's go outside. Just before I head out, I'll just show you how I plan to fuse those panels. I've picked up these, uh, they're a marine type fuse, they're weatherproof. Um, and I'll just solder them in line. I'll cut this and, and splice them in, um, solder them in, and then put heat shrink tape on them so that each panel will have one. And then they'll be easy enough. They just they, I can pop them open if I want to isolate a panel, check each panel, see you know if any of them is just starting to degrade, not putting out enough current. So that's pretty cool. Another way you could go about it is I know you can buy a MC4 
um, connectors that you can just rather than solder in, you can just clip them in in line with the existing ones. So that's a way to go. Or uh, some people will will uh, put a junction box up on the roof, so all the panels go into a junction box, and then inside that junction box will be all the fuses that you can you can pop in there. That's kind of the probably the best way to go about it. But you know you got to buy the junction box. Find you either build it yourself, which is kind of hassle, or I'm sure the ones at the solar places sell are an arm in the lake. But anyway, that's the way I'm going to do it. There's the guts of the system living in my front storage compartment. Now it looks uh, pretty complex there, but if if it's broken down into separate uh, circuits, it's uh, pretty easy to understand. So that's what I'll do. Let me just go through each. Uh, each uh, component and its wiring so you can kind of give you a simple view of it. Let's start with the batteries. I got this nice plastic battery box at a local marine shop. Paid about 80 bucks for it. And so it's mounted, it fit really perfectly in my front storage compartment. You can see there. And so I added these eye bolts down here on each side and bolted them to the bottom metal pan and then with some some straps I can uh, make sure it's securely held in place. It's got a nice kind of lid here. Uh, for ventilation I used the, the existing factory ventilation that goes up and out the front and then underneath I drilled a hole <clears throat> in the bottom of this uh, plastic box so that I have a nice uh, chimney effect going on. I haven't had any problems with the batteries overheating or anything. They do have a temperature uh, sensor, part of my solar controller, so I can look on my meter and see what the, the, the temperature of the batteries is, and it's really never more than ambient outside temperature. So just let me pop that lid and I'll show you, show you the battery bank. There we are. So we got four 6 volt interstate golf cart style batteries in there, and they fit perfectly in that box. And it really acts as one, just think of it as one large 12 volt battery because they're wired in parallel and series. You can see this is the cables that series each pair together. And then they're, they're paralleled. There's the positive output there. And we got a nice little grommet. And we'll swing over here. There we are, there's the negative output there. So yeah, I just think of it as one large 12 volt battery. And total capacity is 464 amp hours. Of course, you can only use around, you know, maximum about 50% of that. So we're looking at a little over 200 to 10 amp hours of capacity before she needs to be recharged. And just show you one more thing here quickly while I have this apart. Right down here, this is a little uh, temperature sensor, and that's sending the, the temperature of the, the battery area back to my uh, solar controller so that it, it, can, it can adjust its uh, charge on the fly. Okay, I'll sew that back up and we'll move on to where this power is going. In the original OEM setup, they just had one deep cycle battery placed in about the same spot as this box. Uh, the, the negative battery terminal was, was attached to the frame of the RV. RV. Um, somewhere down here, you can see where that white wire is. And then the, the positive went over here. And down here, you can see there's a couple uh, kind of fusible breakers they, they have set up here. So I basically left that the same. You can see the 12 volt comes in here and uh, through this fusible breaker it goes to some, some other some circuitry. Through this other one is where it goes into this main wire that feeds all the RV circuits. It goes back to the, the power center where it's split through fuses. So I kind of just left all that fusing in place. There we go. If we move up here, you can see all this mess of wiring. Well, that's just all to do with, uh, I have a fancy remote control for, uh, for my uh, slide and awning. 
um, jacks I can do by remote control and that's all that thing is doing right there it switches the power when I use the remote control which I don't use very much I might even just take the whole mess out but uh, just leave it alone and so that red wire what I've done is it comes up along here and I've hooked it into this disconnect switch it's a leftover switch from my previous setup where I had two batteries I had the old OEM 12 volt and then I had a pair of 6 volt Trojans and I used that for a number of years so I had this switch that would switch between those batteries now I've repurposed it as just basically a disconnect switch so if I want to disconnect quickly disconnect all the circuits in the RV I can just flip that switch and that kills them all in case I want to work on something or put it in storage okay another big piece is the inverter so I got the batteries supplying the 12 volts of my RV but now I need to have AC power sometimes so what I've done is installed a long time ago this 1000 watt inverter it's basically got five years of running on it and still working good so how I installed that is I have um, coming off the battery the positive battery I've got it going through this 80 amp breaker and then into that and then the negative goes to ground let's see you can see over here maybe I should explain this ground system here it looks pretty complicated but basically this is the the negative of the battery bank coming here it's going through this shunt it's called and that shunt is actually I'll show you later that's that's going to be also a, a sense sensor pickup for my uh, trimetric meter so it goes through that sh shunt and rather than pile up all my negative wires on this one bolt I uh, put in a pretty heavy wire here and put in a little bus bar so I have a place to attach all my my negative loads so just think of that as the the ground area there okay so that's coming out of the other end of the inverter I have two wires and they're just extension cords one's a, a nice heavy-duty armor coated waterproof one because it's going out and kind of underneath my rig where it might be exposed to some weather um, the other one this orange wire here is I just recently put in that plug they both go to, to, to plugs inside the RV the armor coated one goes into the living room and then I just made it just on the end of it I attached a normal outlet and then the orange one goes back and through the wall and it goes up into my bedroom near our uh, bathroom sink because I wanted something to uh, charge up my razor and use I have a little water pick that I use for my teeth so I wanted some AC there but we don't really need too much AC power so uh, you can uh, go and check out my video on why why I just have a 1000 watt inverter and why I didn't wire all the all the plugs in there's ways to wire that but I went went this way a little more simple so let's move on to the next component here they're probably wondering what this big monstrosity is well this is my they call it a catastrophic fuse so it's kind of the final fail safe like I have fuses all over the rigs and breakers to protect different circuits but this is right at where the battery is fed in on the positive line and it's 250 amp fuse so if something really goes wrong before the rig catches on fire that should blow and, and save it so it's kind of a fail safe catastrophic fuse they call it and so on the other end of it I have all my um, 12 volt loads so I have the, the load going to the, the inverter and I have the load going to the, the RV circuitries. Um, this blue wire here is coming off my IntelliPower charge converter. You can just think of that as a really fancy, really good quality battery charger. Normally to charge the batteries you plug the rig in and the, the, the OEM converter does the job of charging the batteries. but really they don't do that great a job they're not really meant for boondocking they're for parked in an RV park all 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 your life so when I'm boondocking and I'm, I'm powering on a generator and I want to charge up my batteries quick then that's what this is installed for I can plug my generator into it 
and because it's so close to the batteries and it's a really high quality um, unit it can charge basically it charges it faster than the OEM boats so I'm finding two to three times faster I can get a good charge into my batteries if they're down you know at 50 or 60 percent I can bring them back up 85 90 within an hour or two whereas the old converter I could run it all day and it would never never really charge properly so that's what that's for um, it just on the other end plugs in so what I've done is I plugged it into to a wire here and wired my own my own circuit let's go over here it comes along underneath up and I drilled a hole here and I put in a little plug so I can just come along and plug an extension cord here and plug it straight into my generator when I'm boondocking well hope you're not too confused yet but uh, I made that diagram I showed you earlier and I've written up a total um, complete blog post on this um, detailing each 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 component in the system and also it'll have links to the original post on each component which gives a lot more information on how I did it and why I did it and stuff like that and also on the main blog post I've listed all the parts their prices I paid and links to where where you can purchase them so this mess up here is actually my solar charge controller so that's my Bogart solar charge controller it's a 30 amp PVM controller um, not a MPPT controller you can you know go look at that post and see why I chose that mostly it was to do with um, how cheap it was about 120 bucks but by marrying it with the trimetric uh, um, battery monitor I, I was able to get in there I can custom customize all my charging profiles and do a lot of cool things and it gives all kinds of information so it was a it was kind of an inexpensive way to get a lot of functionality out of it and on either side of it on the output side I've put in a 40 amp breaker and on the input side I have a 40 amp breaker so if I've just flicked these quickly I can disable the you know split the circuits apart if I want to work on them plus they you know they give the safety so that's kind of nice you can see with that breaker there and that breaker there and then my inverter breaker and then the disconnect to the to the, the RV 12 volt circuits I can literally just with a few quick switches I've got everything switched off and can able to work on it or do what I want okay so on the input of that is all my solar panels coming in um, this thick wire here is my new remote ground panel coming in there and then it joins some of the wiring from the rooftop panels and that goes into the, the negative those are the negative side and then the, the positives go through that breaker as well so let's go out now and show you the solar panels okay up here on the roof nice day today let's give you a little look at our RV park here on Vancouver Island right on the ocean gorgeous okay there we go solar panels four 100 watt energy panels all situated on the front of the RV and then down there on the truck you can see my new 100 watt lens sun flexible panel I made that little uh, ground panel kit so if you want to check out the blog post I have links to to all the install notes and details of when I installed them the energies I installed in two different uh, two different separate uh, occasions first was the two panel kit that started me off with solar that was about a year and a half ago then I added two more and now I'm up to 500 watts which I think is just going to be about what we want we want nice sweet spot for us so we'll see we'll see this fall when we get boondocking down south again okay let's just show you the, the monitor inside go Cubs uh, that's the the outlet I have running from the inverter um, that's one of them and so it's close to our TV and Ann's computer and stuff and we can put stuff on the counter there and charge them uh, let's just go in the bedroom here and I have another plug just beside the bathroom here use that to charge up our little uh, little dust buster so that, that's another one in here we can use when we're off grid as well Let's go in the bathrooms where I got my uh, monitor mounted. Let's just see. 
So right now it's a little hazy out um, in the morning and we're coming in you can see that's the solar amperage coming out of the controller showing on my trimetric monitor and I'll show you a few other settings I like on it um, right here Celsius 18 Celsius that measures what the, the temperature of our battery bank is that's also a good way to get the uh, ambient outside temperature because it's sitting there in our front uh, storage compartment out of the sun and there's the voltage total current we're putting into the batteries right now and the percentage full I'll let them run down a bit just for this test and of course there's all kinds of other settings um, you can go and actually can download the manuals for this from Bogart and have a look through all the settings there's a, a ton of them but yeah that's a great little meter well I hope that uh, sorted out any confusion you might have had if you've kind of gone through some of my older videos and blog posts and seen seen the things hooked up a certain way and now they're totally different that's kind of a total overview of my system now so I've written up this blog post um, and also in it you'll find links to all the articles I've written on each of the subjects and installs I've done and, okay go down here also that uh, schematic diagram is in there let's see yeah there we are and also what I've done is I've I've listed all the components um, and what I paid for each now most of this system I paid for out of pocket you know I do get some items given to me free when I do reviews but the only component in this this uh, system was that uh, lens on flexible panel that was given to me recently but everything else I, I purchased myself there were a few other things a friend well, a good friend of mine gave me the cat fuse and did some wiring for me but that's about it so you can see the total cost there came out to around <clears throat> for the system was 2766 and that's all parts there was no nothing paid for labor um, so it's still a fairly hefty price but uh, nowadays a lot of people are spending you know 10 fifteen thousand on systems you know of course they're a little bit uh, higher end than mine but I think this is a good balance gets me a decent system we only boondock around four months a year so it's not like we're out there all the time if that's the case I'd probably invest a little more but uh, I think it came out to a pretty sweet little system so there you go if you if you check the blog there you can get links to places I got it a lot of it I got it off Amazon and, and uh, the Bogard and Intellipower a few other bit and, bits and pieces I got from uh, I think it's Northern Arizona Wind and Power and they were they're good people to deal with. They shipped it out right away. And I don't get any kickback from them. So there you go. Until next time, this is Ray from Love Your RV. Happy trails. Cheers.